Okay, in this lesson we're looking at solving quadratic equations. Now we know that the idea of an equation is to find the value of the unknown that will make it true. So if I have something like x is e or x minus 5 is equal to 2, then the value of the unknown that will make this equal to 2 is kind of asking, well, what minus 5 is equal to 2? The only thing that I can subtract 5 from to get 2 is the number 7. Okay? And that, there I've solved the equation. Okay? I've found the value of the unknown that will make this true. Now, with quadratic equations is when my unknown has a square. So, if I, for example, have something like x squared is equal to 16. But the idea stays the same. I still want to find a value for the unknown that will make this true. So my question is, what can I multiply by itself, or what number can I square to get 16? Okay, and I'm sure most of you will immediately tell me, well, the answer is 4. The only problem here is that it's not the only answer. There's another number that, can, that I can multiply by itself to get 16. And it might take you a while to figure it out, but it's actually quite simple. The number negative 4. Okay, negative 4 times negative 4 becomes positive 16. So it's another solution. Okay, so quadratic equations can have up to two solutions. Okay, it can have up to two solutions. Why do I say up to two and not just it always has two solutions. Well, unlike linear equations, that's where I have x to the power of 1, linear equations will always have a solution. Um, well, actually, yes. Sometimes not. Okay. Uh, something like x minus 2 equal to x plus 3. This will simplify to 0 is equal to Okay, that's ridiculous. This thing has no solution. Okay, so linear equations can have no solutions, but so can um, unknown or quadratic equations. They can also have no solutions. Let me give you an example. If I have something like x squared is equal to negative 1. Now, what number can I multiply by itself to get a negative answer. It's impossible. Okay, well not really. There's just no real number that I can do that with. Any negative number, for example, negative 1 times negative 1 will give me positive 1. And I'm squaring, so I can't use negative 1 times positive 1. That's not squaring a number. So this thing has no real solutions. Okay no real solutions. So I can have two solutions, like the example we saw earlier, where um, I could have two different answers. I can have no answers. Is it possible that I can only have one solution? Well, yes. Okay. There are some examples where we can have only one solution. Let me give an example like that. So let's say I take a number and I square that number. And then I add one. So my question is, what number can I square and add 1 to so that I get the same answer as when I double the value? So let's see 2. If I square 2 and add 1, I get an answer of 5. And if I double 2, 2 times 2, I get an answer of 4. Okay. Now, how about 1? 1 squared plus 1 is equal to 2, and 2 times 1 is equal to 2. So one of the solutions here is x is equal to 1. Okay, is there any other solution? Well, let's try negative 1. Negative 1 squared plus 1 is equal to 2. 2 times negative 1 is equal to negative 2. Mm, doesn't work. Okay. Actually, there's no other solution to this equation. This is the only solution, and we'll look later on at um, how can I make that deduction. Why is that true? Okay. Now, the only conclusion I want you to make from this video at this stage is the following, that quadratic equations 
can be written in the form can be written in the form a x squared plus b x plus c now a b and c we are going to call the parameters and they're equal to zero so I take all of the terms to the one side and make the other side equal to zero by using the normal calculations of subtracting terms on either side and multiplying and things like that okay so let's just look at the ones we've done so far uh, can we do that all of the quadratic equations so this one could have been okay I can write it in terms of a x squared plus b x plus c equal to zero by just subtracting the 16 on both sides and then I see I get x squared minus 16 is equal to that's now the left hand side and the right hand side is equal to zero and here you can see that we've got the ax squared term the bx term is zero and the c is negative 16 okay so we can could have done it with that one how about with the previous one uh, the next one that we looked at okay in this one we have x squared is equal to negative one same thing to get rid of that negative one on the one side so that it's equal to zero I just add a one on both sides so now what do I get sorry I'm writing here I get that x squared plus let me write it here plus one is equal to zero and again we see that ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero format but the bx term is just equal to zero here it has no bx term or b is equal to zero okay x squared plus one is equal to zero and that is obviously impossible there's no number i can square and add one to well no real number to get zero finally this last one that we looked at okay here we can see again okay I've got my x squared term okay I just want to get rid of the neg the two x on that side so subtract it on both sides and then I get if I just write it there I get the value or the equation x squared minus 2x plus 1 is equal to zero and here we can see very nicely our ax squared plus bx plus 1 is equal to 0 where a is equal to 1 because there's a 1 b is equal to negative 2 and c is equal to positive 1 now if I can write it in that format then I can find the solutions because it's not always so easy to do it in our heads I can find the solutions in three ways I can either factorize complete the square or finally use the quadratic formula okay but all of those in the next video so I'll see you there